X3 comes bundled with the excellent drum synth, Addictive Drums from XLN Audio. Let's take a good look at it. To load it, drag it into the track plane from the browser or use your preferred method of loading an instrument. For this demonstration, I'm going to insert this as a separate MIDI track with all mono outputs. If you use the defaults, a simple instrument track will open and the interface will also show. If it doesn't open automatically, you can double click on its track header icon in the track view to open it manually. The interface is split into three parts horizontally. Along the top is the control section. Beneath that is the page section that has four different pages that can be changed using the page buttons in the control section. And at the bottom is the mixer section. We'll start by looking at the kit page displayed by default in the page section. If it's not visible, click on the kick button to show it. There are several different background graphics available here, which while are not affecting the sound of the kits in any way, can be used to change the look of the interface. Click on the arrows to cycle through them. The kit pieces are already loaded with defaults at startup. Let's have a listen by clicking on the play button next to the page button. Now let's take a close look and see how to change some of those settings to suit our purposes. Kits can be loaded by clicking on the preset display which reveals a menu. Here you'll find all of the included presets and you can save your own presets here too. Load a preset by clicking on it. You can also step through them by using the up down arrows. To create your own presets, just load up the required kit pieces and then save it with a suitable name. Let's see how to do that. The 12 kit pieces are all displayed individually on the kit page, but the controls are common to each kit piece, so let's take a look at one. At the top is the kit piece name. To play the currently loaded kit piece, click on the graphic pad. This is a velocity sensitive pad, so the higher up you click, the louder it's played. To load a different sample, click on the L button to the left of the name. This opens the load list where available kit pieces are displayed. Click on one of them to see more information, such as the studio and room size where it was sampled. Click on OK to load it. Beneath the load icon there are up and down arrows to step through the available kit pieces without opening the list. The MIDI indicator lights every time the piece is triggered. Bottom left corner are the mute and solo buttons. To the right is a volume slider that adjusts the level of all the kit piece mics, close, overhead and room in one go. We'll look at adjusting individual levels shortly. Above the slider is an E icon that takes us to the edit page, with a kit piece ready to edit. We'll also look at that page in detail shortly. In addition to these common controls, the toms have an additional set icon just to the left of the kit piece name. Click on it to reveal a menu of tom sets. This makes loading balanced toms simple without having to load them individually. Sets can be saved from this menu as well if you create your own and you want to keep them for easy loading later. Beneath the page section is the mixer area. Here you'll see that there are eight mono channels, one for each main kit piece, and a total of four stereo channels. One each for the overheads and room mics, another for the master output, and another labelled bus that can be used for parallel compression and other effects. We'll look at how to do that shortly. Each of the channels has the same controls. At the top is the name that the channel relates to. Click on this for direct access to the edit page for each channel. Beneath that is the pan control. There's a fader and level meter for channel volume control. And buttons down the side control the insert and effect sends, mute and solo as well as phase and an output routing switch. The master channel doesn't have the solo or output routing buttons. Volume fader, pan 
mute, solo and phase are all obvious enough controls. But we'll take a look at the insert, effects and routing switches in a little more detail. The insert switch turns the insert send on and off. The insert section is found on the edit page that we'll be looking at in detail shortly and it contains processes for compression, distortion, EQ and saturation. The effects switch turns the effects send on and off. The effects section again has its own page and contains two reverbs and EQs. Once again we'll look at this in detail shortly. The output switch can be used to control routing. By default all channels are routed to Addictive Drum's master bus which returns a stereo signal to Sona via its master outs. Addictive Drumzo also has multi outs that are visible within Sona as audio track input options. Click on a channel's out button to send that channel's output direct to the corresponding Addictive Drums out. This removes that signal from the Addictive Drums master channel, but it is now available for selection in Sona in its own track. Using these switches, each drum or bus can be routed to its own track in Sona. We can see this by taking a look at the tracks I inserted earlier at load time and more specifically their inputs. These tracks can then be processed with your favourite processors. Before we leave the mixer page we'll take a brief look at the bus channel. Click on it to reveal bus sends above each of the other channels. Use these to send a copy of the channel signal to this bus. One use for this extra bus is for parallel compression. Use the send levels on the kit pieces to send each signal to it. On the kit pieces, either leave them uncompressed or a very light compression, then use this bus's insert to apply some heavy compression to its signal and mix it back in with the original signals for a great sounding drum kit. Now let's move on to the edit page.